falcon started to nest at the Trojanet since 1983. It doesn't cost the authority anything to have the falcons here. We just give them some peace and quiet and allow them to nest and live here. I'm Carlton Saras, I'm the maintenance superintendent at the Trogs Neck Bridge. Right now we are at the top of the Bronx Tower of the bridge, the highest point of the bridge, and we abandoned the falcons. One of the reasons we put the nest this high is because we're trying to live in harmony with the falcons. So they have some peace and quiet, especially during their nesting season. That allows the chicks to hatch and gives them a greater opportunity of survival. Okay, that's the female flying over our heads right now. She's acting aggressive protecting the nest site, as she should be. You just have to watch your head. They'll go for the high point. Okay, here's our nest box. The falcons have been very, very happy here for quite a number of years. All right, looks good. We got three young falcons that hatched in this nest box this year. And they're actually right up in the front. Now the banding is not harmful for the birds. They will make a lot of uh, fidgeting and a lot of noise when we handle them. This will probably be their first encounter with a human being. All right, I'm gonna reach in and grab one of the birds. You have to be careful because the birds, they have sharp talons. They're just developing at this age. <laughs> And they also can, can take a little bite of uh, skin off your finger. But this is the first of three young falcon babies we have here at the Trogsnet Bridge in 2011. Looks healthy. And what I'm going to do is zip very carefully, uh, very carefully, hold the feet out and try to determine which sex it is, whether it's a male or female. Now for the males, we use a size six, which should fit very easily, and a seven A's for females. So we have, a, we have a small male here. Males are about a third of the size smaller than the females. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put two bands on, one silver and one black and green. And what I'm gonna start off with is calling out the numbers to record the numbers so we can report these numbers to the federal government so that they keep track of the long-term monitoring of these birds whenever it's, it's seen in the future and the band is reported. Okay, Barbara, we're gonna start off with a male. The number is 2206 Four two three six two. Now the silver bands are always carefully placed on the right foot. And the bands are just held on, they're aluminum bands, they'll never rust, they'll never come off. And they're just essentially just crimped on very carefully. And it fits very loosely. And at three weeks of age, which these birds are right now, the tarsus or the foot, this part right here, won't grow any bigger than that. That's why we're able to determine the sexes at this age. Okay, uh, let's see. Barbara, we are going to go with black over green, 08 over AW on the left foot. Now these bands are just a little bit different. They're also aluminum bands. But these bands here are actually riveted on with two small rivets. Once again, they fit nice and loosely around the bird's tarsus or the foot. And we use two little rivets to close the band. Okay, okay. Okay. I get a little 
fidgety at times. All right. All right. So the both bands, they fit nice and loosely, as they should. Now what I'm gonna do is give it a general inspection for health. And what I like to do is look down as the bird is vocalizing, look into their mouths without it biting me. And I wanna make sure that it doesn't have any, any sort of a lesion in the mouth. Sometimes the falcons are prone to a disease called trichinomyces or frounce and they pick it up from pigeons that they feed on. This bird's mouth is very clean. And what I'm gonna do, because the bird has a little bit of feather lice on the wing, you can actually see the little lice running around on the wing. Okay, what I'm gonna do is just temporarily put the towel over the bird's head. That helps out. Sometimes it calms them down a little bit. I'm actually gonna take a little bit of well, we have some lice spray here for birds. It's, and then this, this uh, lice is specific to birds, so it, it doesn't really attach itself to human flesh. And I, well, all I do is put a little bit of a spray, just rub it in, it'll kill the lice instantly. And they're basically just feeding off on the, the blood of the, the, the new sheets that are coming in for the feathers. Okay, and just rub it in a little bit here. And that kills the lice instantly. And you can see here, with the falcons, at three weeks, or just about three weeks, you can see where the tail feathers and the, and the wing, the flight feathers, are all just starting to emerge. And in three weeks from now, they'll be as big as an adult and ready to fly. Okay, so what else I'm gonna do is take a look at the bird's eyes. The eyes look clear, no problems. And I'm also gonna look at their ears. Uh, so I have to close their mouth. And I have to take a look on the side of their head. And their ear canals. Sometimes they get a parasite in their ear canals. A little fly. And his ear canals look good. So our first uh, young male falcon uh, gets a clean bill of health. And uh, he's all ready. Now one thing I thought I should point out with the falcons especially on the beaks. As with most hawks and owls and, and raptors in general, they have a hooked beak. But with the falcons, just, just beyond the hook, on the upper mandible, there's a little tooth. And on the lower mandible, there's a little notch that it slides into. That'll become more pronounced as it grows, and that acts like a severing device, allowing it to kill birds that it feeds on uh, in the city here. All right, so we got our first one done. 